praise ever in my mouth Let my soul glory in the Lord For He hears the cry of the poor The Lord hears the cry of the poor Blessed be the Lord Let the lonely hear and be glad
You are merciful to all, O Lord, and despise nothing that you have made. You overlook people's sins to bring them to repentance, and you spare them, for you are the Lord our God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. Welcome, brothers and sisters, to our celebration of Ash Wednesday. Just to explain a little bit of the logistics, because it will be slightly different. Everything's different, isn't it, with the pandemic? Um, what, what I will do is, after the, the gospel and after the little reflection, the sermon, I'll bless the ashes, um, but I won't distribute the ashes at that point. We'll just carry on with Mass as normal. Um, and at the end of the Mass, when I say go in peace, uh, I'm going to go round the back 
and stand at the apex of the triangle there and uh, uh, one of the Eucharistic ministers will do the same on that side um, and the stewards will direct you to come and stand just in front of uh, each one of us and from a great height I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of ash on top of your head so you don't have to look up or anything like that just stand there and I'll just sprinkle a little bit of ash on top of each person's head and then you you go out people on that side will go out through the main door people on this side will go out through the the side door there uh, and we should be able to do everything required peacefully and safely Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Those are the words, the very dramatic and powerful words that I'll say just before I sprinkle the ashes. The solemn and sombre reminding us of our mortality. Time is limited, and it's something we can't control. Yes, we're dust, but we're very special dust, and we're a very valuable dust to God, who so loved us that he sent his only begotten Son to save us, to have mercy on us, and to bring us forgiveness. So as we come before the Lord at the beginning of Lent 2021, we hold these two thoughts in our mind and ask confidently for that mercy and forgiveness which is being offered to each and every one of us. Lord Jesus, you were lifted up to draw all people to yourself. Lord, have mercy. You shouldered the cross to bear our suffering and sinfulness. Christ, have mercy. You open for your people the way from death into life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting this campaign of Christian service so that as we take up battle against spiritual evils we may be armed with weapons of self-restraint through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit God forever and ever Amen. a reading from the prophet Joel now, now, it is the Lord who speaks. Come back to me with all your heart, fasting, weeping, mourning. Let your hearts be broken, not your garments torn. Turn to the Lord your God again, for he is all tenderness and compassion, slow to anger, rich in graciousness, and ready to relent. Who knows if he will not turn again, will not relent, will not leave a blessing as he passes. Oblation and libation for the Lord your God. Sound the trumpet in Zion, order a fast, proclaim a solemn assembly. Call the people together, summon the community, assemble the elders, gather the children, even the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his bedroom and the bride her alcove. Between vestibule and altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, lament. Let them say, spare your people, Lord. Do not make your heritage a thing of shame, a byword for the nations. Why should it be said among the nations, where is their God? Then the Lord, jealous on behalf of his land, took pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. <clears throat> have mercy on me, God, in your kindness. In your compassion blot out my offence. O wash me more and more from my guilt, and cleanse me from my sin. Have, have mercy, mercy on us, us O Lord, Lord, for we, we have, have sinned. sinned. My offences, truly, I know them. My sin is always before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned. What is evil in your sight, I have done. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. A pure heart create for me, O God. Put a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, nor deprive me of your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. 
Give me again the joy of your help. With the spirit of fervour, sustain me. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. We are ambassadors for Christ. It is as though God were appealing through us, and the, the appeal that we make in Christ's name is, be reconciled to God. For our sake, God made the sinless one into sin, so that in him we might become the goodness of God. As his fellow workers, we beg you once again not to neglect the grace of God that you have received. For he says, at the favorable time, I have listened to you. On the day of salvation, I came to your help. Well, now is the favorable time. This is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel Acclamation. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. A pure heart create for me, O God, and give me again the joy of your help. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Be careful not to parade your good deeds before men, to attract their notice. By doing this, you will lose all reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give alms, do not have it trumpeted before you. This is what the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets to win men's admiration. I tell you solemnly, they have had their reward. But when you give alms, your left hand must not know what your right is doing. Your alms giving must be secret, and your Father, who sees all that is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not imitate the hypocrites. They love to say their prayers standing up in the synagogues or at the street corners for people to see them. I tell you solemnly, they have had their reward. But when you pray, go to your private room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in that secret place, and your Father who sees all that is done in secret will reward you. When you fast, do not put on a gloomy look, as the hypocrites do. They pull long faces to let men know they are fasting. I tell you solemnly, they have had their reward. But when you fast, put, on your, put, put oil on your head and wash your face so that no one no, will know that you are fasting except your Father who sees all that is done in secret. And your Father who sees all that is done in secret will reward you. The Gospel of the Lord. When I was a, a, a youngster, I always thought of Ash Wednesday as a sort of a, a melancholy, a sort of a sad day. It felt as though Ash Wednesday, with the sign of the ashes on your forehead and the meagre meals, signaled the beginning of a long period of giving up things like sweets and chocolate, and a feeling that we were all lost. But look at today's readings, which invite us into a hopeful sort of joy. God invites us to come back to me with all your heart. We ask God in return, a pure heart create for me, O God. Put a steadfast spirit within me. Rather than being melancholy or sad, Lent invites us into a deep joy for we are known by God as imperfect people, but we are loved by God as forgiven. The deeply forgiving love God extends to us 
is like an invitation to renew our relationship with God. Yes, it's a, a period of simplicity, paring down and clearing away the things that are getting in the way between us and God. Also, Lent can be a time to take a fresh look at ourselves and honestly see who we are, just as God does. But it's also a time of great hope as we realize how much God longs for a relationship, a friendship with each one of us. That doesn't mean that we focus on ourselves and our failings, but we can look at how our lack of freedom hinders our relationships with God. An honest look at ourselves as flawed creatures of God doesn't mean we have to give up. Rather, we can rejoice in knowing that there is nothing we have done, no act or way of life, no hidden sin so deeply tucked away in our souls that God does not forgive in us. Imagine the next six weeks as a time to spend with one who loves us so much, who forgives and comforts us and rejoices in our love. And isn't that a celebration of love? Isn't, isn't that a celebration of love even deeper and more joyful if we have been separated from God for a while? Today, many of us will have the ashes sprinkled on our heads. It's quite a dramatic symbol of our mortality and of the sacrifice Jesus made for us with his death. It reminds us and others of God's message to us. I created you for myself and gave, gave you my only son to free you from sin and death. Even now, I'm calling you, drawing you closer to myself so that one day I can celebrate with you a never-ending banquet of love. The ashes on our heads are more than a symbol of our mortality. They are a sign of God fighting for our freedom from this world, liberating us from the clutches of so many things that drag us away from God. Today, Jesus is calling us to himself in, e in an ever deeper way, inviting us into his endless forgiveness and asking us to return to his loving embrace. With tears of joy, we can accept his outstretched arms. When I was a child, my sense of Ash Wednesday was that we were lost. Now, I see that we're actually found. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly ask God our Father that he be pleased to bless with the abundance of his grace these ashes which, we will, which will be sprinkled on our heads in the sign of penitence. O God, who desire not the death of sinners but their conversion, mercifully hear our prayers and in your kindness be pleased to bless these ashes which we intend to receive upon our heads, that we who acknowledge we are, we are but, dust, but ashes shall return, uh, and shall return to dust, may through a steadfast observance of Lent give pardon for sins and newness of life after the likeness of your risen Son, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. So as I say, at the end of the Mass, um, we'll be directed to the, the two triangles. And after I've said the words, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return, I just sprinkle the ashes on top of your heads as you come along.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and this wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. The humble spirit of God, our hearts may be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash all my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> As we solemnly offer the annual sacrifice for the beginning of Lent, we entreat you, O Lord, that through works of penance and charity we may turn away from harmful pleasures and cleansed from our sins may become worthy to celebrate devoutly the passion of your Son, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, and with one voice of praise we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life 
and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. the blood of Christ. He who ponders the law of the Lord day and night will yield fruit in due season. Especially now for those at home, we make our spiritual communion together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul, so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen.
Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received sustain us, O Lord, that our Lenten fast may be pleasing to you and be for us a healing remedy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Pour out a spirit of compunction, O God, on those who bow before your majesty, and by your mercy may they merit the rewards you promise to those who do penance, through Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Go in the peace of Christ.